What up, peeps? This is Get With The Sports, place where you get your sports with a little swag. I'm Glass. And I'm Brandon. The best tag team tandem out here in sports talk. About to give you the epi- <laughs> another episode. Episode 80. 8-0. Man, we did a lot of episodes, bro. It's all good. Uh, episode 80 of the Two Cent Deposit on Sports, place where we give you our two cents on the recent topics in the sports world. As always, we want to thank you for taking the time for watching the show while you're here go ahead and click the subscribe button to the channel so you can get alerted to all the episodes we have here on the get with the sports 2 youtube channel and share with your friends family co-workers whoever it is so they can be entertained with the sports talk while they on the go everything good brandon morning morning everybody good morning cool 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 all right man we got a lot to get into we don't we don't touch the nba too much but i think we're gonna start touching it after next week's the Super Bowl 53 right. will be upon us. There's a lot to talk about the NBA. I'm going to have to give you – I'm going to pick your brain and get your uh, picks of who should – at the time, it would be – I don't know when the All-Star weekend, but pick your brain who's going to get – who at the half halfway point, who, gonna, who you think will get awards. Mm-hmm. Uh, might ask you who you think should be this, in the starting lineup in the All-Star weekend. I got my picks already, but I'll save that for later. And there's a, like I said, there's a lot to talk about in the NBA. We're gonna talk a little MLB today. A couple of people I love and like uh, going into the hall, even though they are New York Yankees, uh, former U- New York Yankee players. But it's all good. Just because you play for the evil empire, don't mean you ain't a good person. Just leave it at that. <laughs> um. Hey, I'm going to touch the NFL, do a little recap of what happened last week. All the f- referees' mental malfunctions. And do you think we need to change the uh, overtime rules mm-hmm. pertaining to the Patriots and um, Chiefs game? But we're going to get into that later. Mm-hmm. Get your thoughts. Let's go ahead and jump into the NBA. We're only going to talk about this one thing that happened last night. Which was a, a, a misfortune. Uh, Indiana Pacers guard Victor Oladipo left Wednesday's game against the Toronto Raptors after an apparent non-contact leg injury under the basket in the second quarter. The Pacers later announced that Oladipo had suffered a serious injury to his right knee and would undergo an MRI today, which is Thursday. Uh, the preliminary exam left the team with the fear that he suffered a season-ending season injury, which will require surgery. Oladipo's right leg appeared to give out on him while he was trailing to defend Pascal uh, Sycom. I think that's how you pronounce his last, last name. Oh. On the drive, Oladipo stayed down for several minutes before being taken off on the stretcher. 26-year-old is having another strong season for Indiana, leading the team in scoring and steals. For more, our prayers and prayers go out to Oladipo for a speedy recovery. Hopefully, everything, nothing, well, not structural. Let's, like I told you off air, they said it might be a dislocated kneecap, which is uh, unfortunate. Hopefully, ain't no other damage up in that in the knee. But uh, that's a big loss for the Indiana Pacers. I think they are in let me look, they are on they in third place. Make sure I got that right. Yeah, they're in third place. Mm-hmm. In uh 30, yeah, in the East, 32 and 15 record. It's a big loss. He's heart and soul of the team, team leader. Uh, I'm sure once he get everything situated with his leg and if he have to have surgery and uh he could walk around, he's probably gonna be on the bench trying to cheer on the team uh during the long during the uh stretch. The regular season and the postseason. I still believe they're gonna make it in the postseason because uh, I believe Nate McMillan is that type of coach that's gonna uh, rally the troops, circle the wagons, and uh, get the team going. But they gonna need him because I'm, I'm put it out there. I seen him when he was at Indiana University. He was a good player. I didn't think he's gonna be the player that he is right now. 
Uh, he got drafted by the Oklahoma City Thunder, and he uh, give all the credit to his uh, upgrade on playing basketball and toughness to uh, his teammate Russell Westbrook. They used to train together in the offseason when he was in Oklahoma City. And then when he got traded to Indiana in the Paul George trade, everybody thought that was going to be a big loss. You know, they got rid of Paul George, one of the top ten players in the league, and you got Victor Oladipo. But Victor Oladipo showed them, y'all y'all ain't missed a step. We're going to go ahead and do this. And last year when they played the Cleveland Cavaliers, I believe they stretched them out to 11 games uh, with uh, LeBron James and Cavaliers. So uh, he had that determination at the end. Of, at the end of the when they lost the series, he had that look in him like we'll be back here next year, and which they were. They they in stride like I said third place right now, uh, with uh, what's that forty seven games in. So bad loss. Uh, hope he gets well real quick and, and not lose a step when he come back from this injury. What you got? What's your two cents on this, bro? Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me, man. But real good player. Third place in the East. You know, they um right, they they ten games above the last team. I'm trying to see how they where they still got a shot at the playoffs. They, Miami is twenty-two and twenty-four. Mm-hmm. They're thirty-two and fifteen. So right now they're ten games ahead of Miami. Right. Which is last spot. Mm-hmm. So yeah, unless they just really, you know, if they just play 500 ball, maybe, mm-hmm. you know, which that's what I'm thinking. They're probably a 500 team without him. Right. You know, so it's it's going to be interesting. Yeah, they uh, they didn't they didn't miss a step when George left. You know, like you said they took cash to seven games last year. That's father's. They they got farther than when George was there. You know, so true that. It's just uh, it's it's gonna be interesting for them, and yeah, good player. Yeah, ain't got too many good players in the league, so mm-hmm. hope he recover from this and get better. But I, it sounds like he's done for this year, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But you never know. Yeah, um, uh, like looking at the roster, uh, they got good backups. Uh, they're not gonna be a Victor Oladipo, but they got Corey Joseph, uh, Darren Collison, Aaron Holiday. So they're gonna be able to write the ship, keep it keep it afloat, uh, going into the playoffs. So, like I said, bad, tough luck, but I think they still gonna be able to make the playoffs, and they're gonna make some damage. Uh, so we're gonna have to wait and see. All right, man, let's get into the MLB because the Hall of Fame votes have been tallied up. We got our, I think it's four, one, two, three, four. We got four people going in. Well, let me put it like this. Including White Sox, Harold Baines, and the Cubs, Lee Smith. We got more people going to the Hall of Fame. We got uh, 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 Roy Holiday, the late Roy Holiday, Mariano Rivera, Edgar Martinez, and Mike Mussina. They were elected into the National, ba- National Baseball Hall of Fame on Tuesday after securing the required 75% of the 425 votes cast by the Baseball Writers Association of America. Uh, Rivera became the first unanimous inductee in the hall, in the hall's history. Um, Like he got all 425 votes, Halliday has 363, and uh, Edgar Martinez also has 363, and Mike Mussina has 326. Uh, Halliday, uh, the other first ballot inductee died in November of 2017 in a single plane cl- single plane crash. The beloved workhorse pitched 16 seasons for the Toronto Blue Jays and Philadelphia Phillies, throwing two no hitters and winning a pair of Cy Young awards. Uh, "Quote: If only Roy was here to personally express his gratitude for the honor, what an even more amazing day it would be." Close quote from his uh, widow Brandy. Uh, and that's what she said in the statement. Martinez, who spent the entire career, spent his entire career with the Seattle Mariners, goes into the Hall of Fame on his tenth and final time on the ballot. The Puerto Rican is widely considered to be the greatest des- designated hitter in the game. Lucina, 
won 270 games over his 18-year career, split almost evenly between the Baltimore Orioles and the New York Yankees. He reached Cooperstown in his sixth year of eligibility. The induction ceremony will take place on July 21st. I have a list of people who didn't make it, who was close, and we'll talk about that later. Uh, Roy Holiday will go in with no team on his cap. Uh, I think his uh, his widow Brandy expressed that uh, mm-hmm. he he won't be the I I thought I ain't gonna say I thought it was the first one, but I forgot recently. Uh, I think in two thousand two thousand fourteen, Greg Maddox, uh, pitcher used to pitch for the Cubs, the Braves, and I don't know if it was any other team. And Tony La Russa, uh, manager for multiple teams, they decided not to go in there with. Uh, uh, team logo on their cap which is cool i have no problem with that so the four including harold baines lee smith do you have any problem with the four going in no no absolutely not no i want to watch edgar martinez 10 seasons though i know i know baseball is so crazy it's it's the hardest thing to get in that hall you know, I think mm-hmm. the NBA, I think the NBA is the easiest. Okay, uh, I get with you. I get with you. And the NFL maybe next, but NFL the, NFL is pretty. I think it's kind of hard too. You know, not as hard as baseball. I don't yeah. think it's hard. As baseball. See, baseball the the writers association, baseball writers association, of America. Them some some picky. Yeah, I don't mm, mofo's up in there, man. Yeah, I don't know who they would uh. I mean, if you didn't give it to the writers to vote, who 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 gets it? I have to check the writers. I have to check the writers who voted. You know what I'm saying? The people that vote, even though it's 425 of them. Well, right. So that's what I'm saying. I mean, if the writers didn't do it, I, so if you I, had I, a writing, if you had a writer that you didn't like and just pissed you off, and you had all the numbers, and accolades, right. and whatever. Right. Yeah, hey, that Trump ain't never getting my vote. You know. That's and that I, I'm. There's writers that's expressed their disdain for certain players. Right. I.e. Barry Bonds. Uh, I can't remember who the other player was. That they just they rub reporters the wrong way, and they got to they got to it. They, you know, I see reporters like that's fine. When it comes to your turn to get voted in. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna let you get up in there. I, I'm, I'm not gonna vote for you. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. But back to the four. I really don't have a problem with the four. No. Not I at used all. to be a Mike Mussina. Fan. Well, I am a Mike Mussina fan. I loved him when he was in Baltimore, and of course, he went over to the Evil Empire, and I really didn't care for him too much. And then. got even, got even better. Anyway, uh, I have no problem with, with none of them other than him. <laughs> Hopefully, he go in as an Oriole, not the yet, not a Yankee. That's just my saying. Uh, but if Mike Mousset, I'm going to tell you, I got a list here. I think Andy Pettit, I'll pick Andy Pettit before him. But then again, this, yeah. You ain't looking like that for me. Yeah, I'm agreeing with oh, that. Oh, okay. Andy Pettit. Oh, because you're a Yankee? I, 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 I could put my biases aside every now and then. Uh, David Cohn. He should be a yeah. and Kurt Schilling. Even though Kurt Schilling, I think Kurt Schilling's political. How can I say it? Political <sighs> ties. I don't say ties. He expresses he expressed some negativity when it comes to the politics, and I mm. think that's kind of like rub people the wrong way. Even and then I come to find out the other day, Donald Trump tweeted his. Uh, Tweet that he should be in the Hall of Fame, which I don't think you want that done. I don't know if you want Donald Trump to <laughs> co-sign yeah, you in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> right, you know. So uh other than that, Musina should have been in there, but there's there's those are the players I think should have been in there uh before him. But that just that's neither here nor there. It's there. Pettit, Cone, they're gonna get their time. Schilling, he gonna get his time because I'm looking at the list of people who didn't make it. Schilling has 259 votes which is 60%. You need 75% to make it in. Roger Clemens at 59.5. Barry Bonds, 59.1, which I'm shocked. They're moving up, and we're going to talk about that later because we talked about it last year. We're going to talk about it again. 
I don't know Larry Walker. He no. wasn't. He was. You don't think he should be in there? I don't think so. He got the numbers, but he wasn't as Harold as some other players. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, Omar Vizcal, I like that. Fred McGriff, that's the one I'm like. Mm, I don't know about that one. Prime right, dog, I don't. I don't know about that one either. See, that's... Manny Ramirez. He might not make it. I don't know which, how many times, what time this is. Because you got 10, 10 tries, correct? To make yes, it in? Yes, right. 10 tries. Okay. So, I don't yeah. know what. It's got to be three or four right now for Manny. Because, I mean, if you look at him, his numbers are going to be as comparable as um, uh, all the other guy in Boston that just retired. Just retired? Yeah. David Ortiz? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They numbers are pretty much, you know, T's played a couple more seasons right. than him. But, yeah, you didn't want to mess with either one of them. So. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Yeah, Gary just, Sheffield. I don't know. I, yeah. I don't know either. Gary, he was a bad boy. You had to really – this is – man, what? Man, that's a lot of freaking <laughs> – Jeff Kent. He might. Yeah. Andrew Jones. I don't know about Andrew Jones. All right, your boy. How about your boy? He got the numbers. Sammy? Yeah. Okay. He got the numbers. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's move on real quick. We're going to come back to them because we're going to talk about the PED era and everything. But like I said before, um, your boy, Mariano, the Sandman, Ramirez, uh, Rivera, I'm sorry, uh, mm -hmm. the first one to get unanimous votes in the induction. I have no problem with it. If anybody deserve it, it's him. He's a, he's, he show, uh, he's, he shows his uh, good character on and off the field. They were saying, you know, he treats everybody the same, whoever works up in uh, Yankee Stadium, the fans, the coaches, and like I said, the workers, everybody had nothing but good things to talk about him. Uh, he's quiet kept. He's a family man. Ain't nothing. I, just, I heard Stephen A. Smith say on ESPN that, you know, who would be had the nerve to say, I'm not going to vote for Mariano? You know what I'm saying? Do you have a problem with him being the first one to get the uh, – wait, no. first. Do you have a problem with him – I know you don't. You're a Yankees fan. Problem with him getting a unanimous decision. And do you have a problem with him being the first one Cause it was mid. I got players that I know should have been first. I said, yeah. All right, I'm gonna give roll them to you right now. Well, actually, they was the last three. You got all right. Mariano is one hundred percent. Ken Griffey Jr. You sure. know damn well he should have got a hundred uh, unanimous decision. They said Tom Seaver was next in line with ninety eight point eight percent, and Nola Ryan was fourth. I'm sorry, third. With ninety eight point seven percent. Okay. I don't know too much about Tom Seaver, but I know Nolan Ryan. He should have been up in there too. He should have had hundred percent too. But definitely King Griffey Jr. It, right. it, it's just crazy how. And I think let me fix this up right here. Um, I got it right here in the notes. The closest anyone had pre previously come to receiving hundred percent of the vote was King Griffey Jr., who received four thirty seven out of four forty. So who the hell were the three people? That said, you know what? He won't be the first one if we to get the unanimous 100% votes. Come on, man. That that's that's crazy to me. So what they they they, they scale back some votes or whatever because now it's 425 and not 440. Uh, yeah, it must have, must have. Cause it wasn't 425 this year. Yeah, somebody who who knows, who knows. I don't know if you got it. Uh, vote in or uh, what have you, but I was gonna say something real quick. What was I gonna say? I think with this, with social media being more influential in today's sports, mm -hmm. whoever didn't vote for Mariano. Somebody, I think it would have been exposed either on Twitter, Instagram, somewhere in social media. We got exposed, and I think them, even though they might have, they they might say nobody would ever be 
unanimously, unanimously decided. Mm-hmm. I think they were scared that their name would come out as you was the one not voting for such and such player. You know what I'm saying? Right, because yeah, so you know somebody gonna hunt them down. Like who was that one? They gonna find who was out. That one, you know, find them. As long as you got TMZ, they'll find right. out. <laughs> back right. to back to uh, Rivera. Uh, he's the all-time leader in career saves at 600, 652, 19, uh, over 19 seasons with the Yankees. Uh, 0.70 ERA with 42 saves over 141 playoff innings in route to five World Series championships and World Series MVP honors in 1999. Come on, man. Shots out. As much as I hate the Yankees, I got to respect that. That's 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 a good look. Yeah, this guy gave up less than one run, and forty-two saves, and one hundred forty-one playoff innings. When he came in, the game was over. Yeah, they played that. What's that song, <laughs> Sandman? End of the Sandman. Right. He had that one bad. I would just remember Cut that him. one bad season. Oh yeah. When uh, I forgot who it was that hit the home run on him, I said, "Yo, what? I know that. I know the hitter was like, oh damn, I connected on that. He had a hell of a cutter, boy. That shit was nasty." Um, yeah. All right, man. So we already we got our first unanimous decision player. Who's gonna be next? I Derek Jeter's up next. Who gonna deny him? Um, I, know, I know he ain't the best. Second baseman, he ain't he ain't the best New York Yankee. But who gonna deny him, man? They deny Ken Griffin, so yeah, I don't think Jet G are gonna get the unanimous. Okay, right. I don't think so. I I I'm kind of borderline. The name Derek Jeter resonates all over over all over uh, baseball, but mm-hmm. like you said, Ken Griffin. If Ken Griffin didn't get it, and like I said, he ain't the best. Shortstop, He's one of the best second baseman. Oh, right. sorry, best second baseman or best Yankee. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna go against. Him. All right, man. We say this every year. We're gonna go over it again. Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens are moving up. They're in their seventh try. They got three more tries left. Last year, Roger Clemens was at fifty-seven point three percent. Now he's at fifty-nine point five percent. Barry Bonds was at 56.4%. Now he's at 59.1%. Three tries left. You think he gonna, they going to get in? Yeah. Before, on their 10th try? On their 10th try, on their last try. I mean, the baseball world going to be watching on their 10th and that 10th season. I'm yeah. Glad, I'm, glad, I'm glad you're optimistic on that because I can't do – listen. What gets me, even though I still believe Roger Clemens and Barry Bonds never got, never tested positive for banned substance, for PEDs. But they they think, you know, you got your clean, you got your, what's it, cream and your clear? Yeah. Barry Bonds. And what gets me with Roger Clemens, they wasn't even thinking about him. He just dared them to test him. And they said, okay, so you dared me to test you. Come bring your ass up in here. And he got busted. You know what I'm saying? He went to he went to went to uh, federal court for it and everything. So he shot yeah. himself in the foot. I think there's so I think there's so much bad blood. Three tries left. I I don't know if they're gonna make it, man. I think I think they're gonna have to be. Well, I mean, you got. I can I can see you know why you would think that, or or if I thought about it long enough, I would probably be leaning that way too. Mm-hmm. Just because of uh, Pete Rose, the whole Pete Rose thing, you know. Mm. I mean, we can go back as far as that. Yeah, you know, is is gambling worse than the PEDs? You want my thought? Yeah, yeah. Do you think it's worse? What? No. I, first, let me ask you: Do you think it's worse? Yeah, I think it's worse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll put you like this. PEDs, it just came up. I ain't going to say just came up. It came up in the 2000s. It was a witch hunt. See who did it and who didn't do it. Right. And the, and the owners put 
turned their back to it because they was making money because the Sammy Sosa, uh, Mark McGuire run for the home run, uh, for the most home runs in the season. You know what I'm saying? But betting was the is the holy grail of MLB because that shit is on the wall in, in every clubhouse. Back to I think baseball star back to the 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 black sock black Sox days. You get what I'm I saying? Can, yeah. So d- there's no excuse. Everybody know you don't bet on baseball if you play baseball. And it's so easy to cheat. And Pete right. And Pete Rose oh. just didn't even think about it. And another thing we talked about this last year when we talked when Hall of Fame came up. Pete Rose, I can't trust him. His I don't know. I don't know if I want to say I'm character assassinating him, but every time they ask him a question, no, I didn't do it. Then when we find out, well, I just did a little bit. Then something else come up. No, I didn't do this. Oh, then, and then we find out he did. Oh, well, you know what? It seemed like I was doing it that way. So we were just like, dude, you keep lying to us every time so let we me ask, ask you a question. This. Okay, so let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. When it all came out and it was first brought to him mm-hmm. and they asked him in front of the committee or whatever, did you bet on baseball? If he had admitted it then hmm. and said, yeah, I did, bad choice, badass, you know, whatever punishment I got coming to me, do you think the baseball world mm, good question. would forget giving him by now and put, actually put him in just because he admitted it on the first go-round and they didn't keep catching him in lies or whatever? Well, you know what? If you would have said, you know what, yep, I bet it on baseball, but if you go ask the bookies or whoever made my bets, I bet it for my team to win. I never bet against my team. Still wrong, but you ain't try to sabotage, sabotage your team, your team to win a game. All right. With that being said, if you notice, Andy Pettit admitted he used PEDs. He ain't, he ain't a, he, he's moving up. He's uh at well, nine. Long way to go. He had nine point nine percent, but he admitted, and people ain't jumping on him like that. Uh, Mark McGuire admitted to it, and I think he they easing up a little. They easing up a little bit. He ain't on this list, but he, he they ain't on this list. Yeah, he's they eased up a little bit. And I'm about to ask you this other question, real quick. Alex Rodriguez on I think he was on ESPN Baseball Tonight. He said, you know what, he, he, he admitted to it. He admitted to his mistakes. He wished he didn't do it. Uh, so that helps you out. To me, if you admit to it, it helps you out and you move up on the list. Where's it? And he ain't even on this list. He ain't on this list either. <laughs> so, I don't, man, I don't know. Well, man. The guy's got less than 7.5% of the yes. vote. Yeah, yeah. They need 75%. Which is over three hundred within ten years. Within ten years, and they got less than fifty. Yeah, they got less than thirty. The only one on this list that got a chance, and it's a slim chance, is Manny Mar- Manny Ramirez. Oh, Barry. Well, Barry Bonds, Roger, and Roger Clemens, but Manny Ramirez is next to twenty two percent, ninety seven votes. With that being said, hey, so I got a list up. So you said Sammy Sosa. Do you think he's gonna get in eventually? I don't I don't know. You know what? I'm gonna tell you this. This and, from, and oh, oh, oh. Let, me, let me put this disclaimer. This this statement is coming from a diehard Chicago Cubs fan. Go ahead, bro. Proceed. Yeah. Andy Pettit, Sammy Sosa, A Rod, all these guys. Hey, if Clemens and Bonds don't get in by their tenth season, mm. ain't nobody getting in. Good point. In that era. Mm-hmm. Ain't nobody in the era, PD era, that was involved in that getting in. So them two guys is gonna determine who else gets in. Mm. I, I think. You know what? And that's a shame because this is how I see it. This it's do we even know who and who did who did and who didn't in that era? Hey. I think some people slid through. I ain't gonna say no names, but they they played on Houston Astros and they had big arms. Just gonna put it out there, Bagwell. Uh, they slid through. Hmm. <laughs> Just saying. And it's like, okay, if you get caught, you got caught. 
so you can't go in. But then you got other players that slid through, and we don't really know. It might make it in the hall. So is it fair? No. Like, but no. then again, like I always said, life ain't fair. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's kind of I mean, you did, I mean, there's all type of underwritings and, you know, short – you know, short stories to each one of these players. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. They should go in under their own numbers or accolades or whatever. And while you're telling their story, you can also put in that story that they was accused or they were involved in this era, uh, you know, PEDs. Mm-hmm. But it don't detract from what they actually did. So now that, that makes, that lets everybody know as a fan, okay, well, now you be the judge or how you want to, you know, how you want to move forward, you know, as far as what do you think about this player. But as far as baseball, he was one of the greatest, greatest players because he had the numbers. Who's this? I'm talking about anybody okay. who get in. Okay. You know. Mm-hmm. So that's what that's what I I I would think. But the base the varieties they sold they bias. I think more than half of them are biased. You know. And you know they got this uh, mentality, you know that uh, they they're not gonna change. They are gonna stick by. He was involved in it, and he just probably ain't never getting my vote. It's a shame when he's never getting my vote. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a bunch of crap, you know, because you know uh, I don't care what field you took, ain't got nothing to do with hand eye con- uh, coordination. I agree. That's just my thought. Cause Sam, not Sammy. So the Barry Bonds, he was a he was a Hall of Famer before his head got big and he got swole. You know what I'm saying? And this is a shame that and then his attitude didn't help it none either. Uh, towards reporters, he calmed down a little bit now. I don't know if he's a, a coach anywhere anymore. I know it was Florida Marlins. I think he went back to the Giants. Uh, I don't know if he's coaching anymore, but he's trying to mm-hmm. trying to get his character upgraded by the way you're acting now, but it's just, it, to me, it's just the same, you know, it's just. I mean, right. I mean, the MLB still allow him to coach. Mm-hmm. And to Mark coach McGuire. Their, their athletes. And Mark McGuire. And Mark McGuire. McGuire. So why not? Right. If they got the numbers, why not let them in there? You confident in them being able to teach mm-hmm. these other guys that's coming up and coming along or whatever. Mm-hmm. You you're not worried about them, you know, sliding them some PEDs or or whatever or telling them the wrong things. You confident in their ability. So well, this guy knew how to hit, you know, a PED or not, he knew how to hit. Mm-hmm. You confident in him teaching the next guy mm-hmm. why he can't go in. Mm. Good point. Good point. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're gonna have to wait and see. I asked the question, Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens, they're going to make it in there. They're on their seventh try now, where they was on their seventh try. They got three more tries left. Brandon said he think they're going to get in on the 10th. I don't think so. I think they're going to have to come in the back door. <laughs> you know, so we're going to have to wait and see, man. Uh, but right. to the four individuals, uh, Holiday, Rivera, Musina, and Martinez, congratulations, y'all in the hall. Can't wait to see y'all July 21st. Moving on, bro. NFL, before we hit about this, out, out this uh, episode. The NFL is, to, is considering making pass interference reviewable in 2019. We all know why this triggered up because of the uh, New, uh, New Orleans Saints, Los Angeles, Ra- uh, Los Angeles, Ra- Los Angeles Rams, NFC t- uh, championship game. Uh, the NFL is considering making the pass interference review, reviewable next season following the missed pass interference call on the Los Angeles Rams in Sunday's NFC Championship game. With the game tied 2020 with 145 remaining in the fourth quarter, Rams cornerback Nick, Nickel Roby Coleman mauled New Orleans Saints wide receiver Tommy Lee Lewis before the ball arrived in their vicinity. A penalty wasn't called. And the Saints settled for a 31 yard field goal. Robbie Coleman openly admitted that he committed pass interference after the game, further drawing the ire of Saints fans. Oh, uh, hell yeah. <laughs> Quote, oh, uh, hell yeah. That was a P.I. I did my part. Referee made the call. We respect it. Close quote. Any change to the current rule would require votes from at least 24 of the league's 32 owners. You've seen the play, bro. Yeah. This yeah. Was, Go ahead. This one gets me. 
and it, Bleacher Report r- reported it this week. You have three referees that lives in Los Angeles, and one of the three used to play for the Los Angeles Rams. How the hell did the NFL mess that up, man? No, no, no. So be, you, yeah. Exactly. And a, Ram, a, a former Rams player is a referee of that game? Come on. Now, I'm not – they have – with the when the when the play happened, they they – they took a uh, snapshot of the picture and they put arrows on their referees and say these three is from Los Angeles. And I think the one that's that close to the play that was in the middle of the field said he he was a former Rams player. All that being said, they show the play all the time. There's two referees right there. You mean to tell me neither one of y'all blew the whistle? I it was obvious. Even people at home seen this happen. I don't understand why they did that. Why they didn't? Why they didn't blow the whistle? And I'm put it like I'm give you this. Uh, Robbie Coleman was yeah. on the other side of the field. He knew he was out of position. He ran straight across after the ball was hiked and blew up uh, Tommy Lee Lewis. And he knew it was he. He knew it was pass interference. He looked at the referee like, "Oh shit, y'all ain't gonna call it? Okay, let's keep on playing, dude." It was it was so egregious to to so many levels now saints fans i know y'all i know y'all hurt it was it was it was it was a bad no call i know y'all all up in your feelings y'all think y'all should be up in the in the super bowl right now and it and, and deservedly so but y'all need to stop putting up these signs billboard signs talking about we got robbed uh what the other sign i seen refs something about the refs I seen a, a, a advertisement yesterday that the the eye doctor is gonna give free exams to the referees. <laughs> like y'all <laughs> taking this to a whole nother level. Bad call. <laughs> they need, do you think? I believe they need to review this pass interference thing. They should be able to review such egregious stuff. Not all of them, but when it gets egregious like this, you should be able to throw the flag. They say y'all need to check that out. That that was crazy. I mean, it, the ball wasn't even there yet when he got blew up. Give me your two cents, bro. Yeah, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to say you know what was as egregious. If this play was as as egregious as the next play or the last play. Mm. You know, so, uh, I think they're going to take into account. You know, they're going to crunch their numbers. I mean, pass interference. This is a call during the game on average, you know. Mm-hmm. True. You know, they're gonna take that into account. I'm I'm thinking maybe three as I watch the games, you know, maybe three a game. That's you know. Uh they're gonna either do it, you know, like that, like you said, uh, where they review them all, or they may just wait and do like okay, inside of the two minutes. Uh, mm-hmm. before, I, I I'm cool know. with that. Cool. The half, mm-hmm. and then at the end of the game, you know, they made those may be automatic reviewable, you know, so they may go that way. Mm-hmm. But they're definitely going to change something in that because they blew that call, and I'm sure they checking referees' bank statements and bank accounts and family mm-hmm. members, and you know, because that's true. Uh, that's true. You know, that look, that look, that was horrible. You know, mm-hmm. and you know, like like the player said, you know, Roby said, hey, yeah, I was beat. You know, I went over there. But, you know, anybody who watched the game here, he got over there so quick, all he had to do was turn around. He probably intercepted the ball. Mm-hmm. He was closer to the ball than the receiver. Right. You know? So, but he knew he was beat, so his whole thing was disrupting the play. But he got there a lot sooner than he thought he was going to get there. You right. know. Right. And, you know, so that it was, it was very unfortunate, very messed up. You know, I mean – the league, you know, knew right away, you know, when it happened that they blew that call, you know, that and they were just so open. It wasn't nothing that what they had, you know, what he had to turn the camera angles, or you know, you could decide for it was inconclusive. No, this was blatant. It was wide open. It's, you know, it's like somebody sticking their foot out and tripping somebody. Mm-hmm. You know, that's how you know blatant it was. So yeah, I, I believe they're gonna change it. It's just what type of change they're going to make to it. But, yeah, they're definitely going to change. Okay. I don't know what other teams want to happen to them. Man, 
I, I, I know I'll be sick if I seen that happen to my, to my Denver Broncos or hometown Chicago Bears. But with that being said, I agree. I'm going to put you like this. I, you, you don't have to review every call. I, that's not what I'm asking. But I should be able to, as a head coach, be able to throw a flag and have you review it if I want you to review it. Kind of get what I'm saying? Right, right, right. If I, I want to use my flag for that, mm-hmm. then you should allow me to use it for that. Whatever I want to use it for. Whatever. Exactly. Whatever I want to use it for, yeah. Right. Uh, Shouts out to uh, Diego Baryshnikov and Uncle Hate of A Sports, Straight Sports No Chaser. We was on their show last night, me and Big Q. Uh, If you want to check it out, I'm going to put the information up above my head so y'all can check it out. But we were talking, you know, I believe that one play – okay, let me change that. They were saying that one play doesn't make – the game, because they still had time. They, yes, they still had time. I, I, I get that. And, you know, there was mistakes made before the play. And my thing was, yeah, I understand there was mistakes. There was mistakes made before the play. There was time where Sean Payton should have been running the ball. Because I don't think Camaro got more than 45 yards. I don't know how many – with a handful of carries. They should have ran the ball more than they threw the ball. I got that. There was time where Drew Brees threw behind players. It seemed like he's losing some arm yeah, strength. That's, that's all. That's part part of the game, and you can even say this missed call is part of the game. Mm-hmm. But if they make that call, if they make that call, game is over. That game is over. That's my whole point. Yes, I know there's stuff that happened before the game that should have that 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 was wrong. But if I'm Sean Payton, my thing is okay. Yeah, I understand they made mistakes, but we're right here now. This is the play we're gonna do to right the mistakes we made. Wrongs, right. Now, when you can go all the way back to the first quarter talking about mistakes. Right. But right here, right now, is the reason why right. I'm, the, I'm one of the best coaches in the league right now because of this play I'm about to put up in there. You kind of get what I'm saying? Whereas yeah. this call should have been should have been called the right way because if it was called the right way, it would have been a first down. I could run the clock out. I don't know how many timeouts the Rams had. They might have had one timeout if I, if I ain't mistaken. I'm running the clock out, and I'm picking my field goal where you only have 15 or less seconds to do what you got to do, and we're going to the Super Bowl. Right. You know what I'm saying? People say, you know, I always tell everybody, life ain't fair. I got that. But you don't, don't act like whatever happened before. It's the cause of the lose. Right. Right, exactly. That's, I think that's my point. No. You know? So. Mm-hmm. Woo! I know, but I know, man, there's this one video. Bro, I think I put on Insta. I think I sent it to you on Instagram when they when uh, the Rams kicked that field goal to win the game. This brother punched his TV <laughs> so hard. I was yeah. like, dude, I can't, man. Nah. It wasn't a big TV. It was nice to do probably 24, 32 inch, but still, yeah. still, and yeah, he was that man. He punched a hole through that TV, man. It's all good. Uh, before before we move on to the next about. Well, Mahomes getting paid. Let's go with the other game, with the overtime. You think they should – if y'all didn't know, Patriots-Chiefs. It's funny how both team won – both games was in overtime. But anyway, Patriots-Chiefs. Patriots won 37-31 in overtime. Uh, Chiefs came uh, – not Chiefs. Patriots came back to tie the game up. They're going to overtime. Patriots win the coin flip. They get the ball first. They come down. As they always do. Th- yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping. It. I'm gonna keep it on. I'm gonna keep this on the rail so we get so we get done. Um, Patriots had too many third and longs, and they completed it. But anyway, they third and longs. They they completed first down, first down, first down. Get the touchdown. Win the game. I believe the other team should get a chance to do the same. Do you – where do you think about that? Do you believe that both teams should get a chance to do what they got to do to win the game instead of just a coin flip? I win the coin flip, I come down, get a touchdown, game over. Because the reason why I say that, Patrick Mahomes scored those three touchdowns in the fourth quarter. He was hot. He should have a chance to get on the field just like Brady to get bring their team back to see if they can score a touchdown to tie the game up. That's what I'm asking. What do you think? 
first of all, I'm going to throw out this disclaimer again. My brother right here is a Patriots lover. Proceed, bro. <laughs> Somehow that didn't sound. <laughs> you know. But anyway, um, yeah, he was hot. I don't know what adjustments they made, but they were all the right adjustments in that fourth quarter. Um, Patriots got the ball, like you said, overtime went down the score. I think everybody in the football world who's been watching football the last 10 years knew that once the wing the one at coin toss, that was the end of that game. You know? Pretty much, pretty much. So, I think that rule can be changed just for the playoffs. I will leave it as is during the regular season. Good point. Playoffs, Good point. both teams get the ball, mm-hmm. you know, no matter what. Both teams get the ball. If both teams score a touchdown, then after that, next score wins. <laughs> whether, it's, whether it's a field goal or not. Both teams get the ball in, in overtime in the playoffs. If both teams come down and score a touchdown, after that, the next score wins, you know. That's okay. I think it should be. All right. What'd you think about playing the whole 15 minutes in overtime and see what comes up? No, because there's a good chance it's going to go in the double overtime. No. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good point. Well, I've heard all kind of – I've heard some – Because, I mean, it's still even, – even though both teams have scored, mm-hmm. let's say both teams get the ball and both teams score touchdowns, that 15 minutes can still go without somebody scoring again. But so that, go you ahead. can still end up being in another overtime anyway. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I got you. I got you. I don't think they're going to touch it, though. I think they're going to leave mm-hmm. it just like this. You don't think uh, they got to ch- at least have the – I say let's – at least let the other team touch the ball and see what they could do. If they don't score, game mo- If I score a touchdown, you get a chance to score a touchdown. If you don't score a touchdown, game over. That's now, if you do it. score a touchdown, now, now what? We got 15 minutes. Right. Okay, 15 minutes go by. Nobody scores. <laughs> All right, man. I you hear see what, you. what I'm saying? I hear what you're saying. <laughs> okay. I got you. I got you. Yeah. All right, man. <sighs> Let's get on last one. Speaking of Patrick Mahomes, he could be one year away of landing a record-breaking contract. The Kansas City Chiefs are expected to sign their quarterback to an extension following next season when he is when he's first eligible with a deal that could be the NFL's first $200 million contract, sources told ESPN Adam Schefter. Schefter adds that issues involving the collective bargaining agreement, which will only have two seasons remaining in 2020, would have to be addressed, as well as those that involved the uh, the final two years that Mahomes would have left on his rookie deal, including the fifth-year option. Green Bay Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers is currently the league's highest-paid player after he signed a contract last summer that pays him $33.5 million in average annual value. Mahomes was still in the first year as a starter, in his first year as a starter, emerging as a top MVP candidate. The 2017 first round drew uh, through for 5,097 yards and a league high 50 touchdown passes in 2018. Bruh. 200 million? Hell no. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Aren't you one of the people other than Ezra? Shout out to Ezra. Aren't you one of the people that said it's the market? Yeah, I am. With that mm-hmm. being wait, 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 wait. With that being said, who signed an eighty-four million eighty-four million dollar contract guaranteed in Minnesota? I I know Kirk Cousins got that money. Kirk Cousins. I, Do I, you didn't, not, I, I, I didn't agree with it. It's, but it's, he got it, it, it. It doesn't matter. It, bruh, you guys told me it's the market. Okay. So with that being said, that this ain't the market yet. This ain't the market. Two hundred million. What? 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 Aaron Rodgers get? <laughs> he signed a. I got to I'm gonna put it up right here. He's Aaron. 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 What the hell is Aaron? What the hell is Aaron? 
Uh, hold on. Where? Oh, right, here we go. He signed four year, hundred thirty four million. Okay, that's sixty million less than what Patrick Mahomes. What this number that he, they got out here for him, and he don't even have the games behind him. Hold up, hold up, hold up. First year starter, MVP of the league. So, so that's one that, that's, one, that's a that's a that's a, that's a hell of a resume. That's a hell of a resume. Be a one. He got Licky. <laughs> oh, he got two years to to, to show and prove. Uh, five touchdowns, fifty. And, and that's sorry. right. That's, and that's the whole thing. And that's the whole thing. He got two more years with this uh, before uh, his rookie deal, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, so you wait and see. I'm wait. Wait. First, I'm playing devil's advocate because you know damn well I don't think nobody worth a hundred million dollars, let alone two hundred million dollars. But I'm playing devil's advocate because y'all kept on shoving it in my face. It's the market. It's the market. Well, we can see what the market is. Just okay. It might not be two hundred million. It might not be two hundred million. It might be one hundred eighty million. It might be one hundred seventy million. It's gonna be more than Aaron Rodgers because it's not even what the league think. It's what the Kansas City Chiefs think. It's what the, it's what the Kansas City Chiefs think, uh, okay. what the Kansas City Chiefs want and what they need. They need this man behind center. And it's gonna, they're going to pay whatever need to take to pay this man behind center. But with that being said, I always say you get what you ask for. You could just look at um, quarterback for the Seattle Seahawks. Why am I? Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. We'll say Aaron Rodgers. We say Joe Flacco. Once you pay your quarterback, that's why everybody rushing to get what they need to get before they had to pay these guys. The, the, the quarterback's rookie contract is up because they know once they pay that man, they got to get rid of half the team. Because I believe because Joe Flacco, when they paid him that hundred and something million that they paid him, they had to get rid of Anquan Bolden. To me, right. and I mean, I've said it time and time again, Anquan Bolden is the reason why Flacco made that money. He played, he's, he played stupendous <coughs> in the postseason because yeah. he threw the ball with the, uh, in Anquan Bolden, Bolden's area, and he and Anquan went to go get it. All them passes wasn't, wasn't accurate. They wasn't perfect. But Anquan Bolden was that wide receiver that grabbed anything in his vicinity. Once he left that team, Flacco wasn't the same. With uh, Russell Wilson, once they paid him that money, they had to let go of the Legion of Boom. The defense that actually won uh, the Super Bowl with him. You know what I'm saying? So it's like once you – I'm not I'm not mad at Kansas City. I'm not mad at Los Angeles Rams. Because if I ain't mistaken, golf might be up for – he might be done with his rookie contract after next year, right? After next year. But see, they got all they got Dominican Sue, who's on a one year contract. They got Marcus P- Marcus Peters. They got uh at least they got a lot of guys on one year. They got deal. a lot of guys on the one year deal because they know they got to get it right now. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's pretty much where the league is going, you know, right now, because the game's changed to where the quarterback is. Well, the quarterback has always been the most important player on the field, but now he's getting paid for it. And uh, the owners they got these rules changed, whereas you can barely touch them. You can't, mm-hmm. bro, you can't run back past them too quick, you know, because of you know if you know the helmet or mouth guard fall out their mouth, you're gonna get, you're gonna flag or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's they they protecting their investment. Two hundred million dollars. If the Kansas City Chiefs get this guy two hundred million dollars. You won't be able to breathe on him. You're not gonna. You're not gonna be. Able, you're not touching him. Right. Totally agree. You're not. Totally you're agree. not. But at the same time, it's it's the league. It's, it's even go back to the Colts. You know they put invested all that money in, in Andrew Luck, mm-hmm. and he was still getting killed. Mm-hmm. What do they do? They go out and they fix that offensive line. They pay a lot of money for that offensive line. Mm-hmm. Luck is restored, renewed all over again, you know, because he still he has the ability. So it's it's crazy, but 
you know, that's that's the way to lead. If you watch it long enough, you can see and follow the money. You can see where they where the lead places is most important, you know, of the game. At, you know, right now it's quarterback, wide receiver, and offensive line. In that me. order? I think quarterback, offensive line, wide receiver. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I think that's that's where it's, you know, I think the one who fell off most, one of the most expendable is the running back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. You know, I'm sitting here looking at the list of top, top quarterbacks, top highly paid quarterbacks. I'll put you like this, bro. Now I'm looking at this and I'm running by you. Mahomes gonna get that 200 million. <laughs> Matt Ryan's make it is a on a five year, 150 million dollar contract. One five zero. Even though Aaron Rodgers is making the most annually at 33, Matt Ryan's making 30 million a year, but he's got a five year contract at 150 million dollars. We all know contracts are on on toilet paper because they. It's all about the guaranteed money. But his guaranteed money at sign his guaranteed at signing, talking about Matt Ryan, 94.5. Mm-hmm. Come on, man. Mahomes ain't got to go in the office. He's gonna just call like, dude, you you know what I'm about. Well, we'll see, especially next year, because now the league <clears throat> has got a full taste of him. Uh-huh. Everybody knows what he's capable of. So defense has got a pretty a good idea how to prepare for him. Mm-hmm. This, this go around, so it's gonna be interesting to see how he's defense next season, and you know, so Kansas City, like y'all said, it's the market. Kansas City cannot afford not to pay this man whatever he wants. They're gonna give him a, a, a blank check, whatever you want, you gotta have because if he don't pay him, one of these other teams gonna pay him. He, he got. Like I said, we got two more years left to see if this is a one-hit wonder. I agree with you. It could be a flash in the pan. I got that. But I'm like looking at this list. Jimmy Garoppolo, five years on 137.5. He only threw what played in 10 games before he signed that contract. Give it Matthew Stafford, five years, 135. Come on, man. What like I, I agree with you. We let's see how these two years gonna go on this rookie deal. They gonna pay that man two hundred million dollars. I'm just gonna leave it like I'm just just letting you know. All right, okay. All right. With that being said, we got one more level. I forgot to see this. We're gonna be out here after this. Dallas Cowboys. Zach, okay. Did you hear about Beasley? Cole Beasley, wide receiver for the Cowboys. <sighs> the 29 year old receiver whose contract expires in March, he'll be a free agent <laughs> in the off season. Uh, discussed a, his pending free agency Tuesday on Twitter and said, honestly, the front office, we're talking about the Dallas Cowboys, the front office pushes who they want to get the ball to. I haven't been a huge priority in that regard. So he's crying about how it ain't even Jerry, J, uh, Jason and Garrett. It's the front office, Jerry Jones and them. Like, we didn't know that. You get what I'm saying? Like, come on, dude. Right. We know Jerry Jones running things. Uh, right. Garrett is nothing but a puppet. Just sitting on the right. sideline, clapping his hand, being a cheerleader. Uh, Beasley finished the 2018 season with 65 receptions, 672 receiving yards, and three touchdown catches. His 87 targets were second on the team. However, his target did drop from an average of 6.14 per game to 4.45 per game after the Cowboys acquired Amari Cooper from the Oakland Raiders. So, Beasley seen the writing on the wall. I seen it too. As soon as they got Amari Cooper, that was a, that was a new toy they could play with. And Beasley yeah. was just a second thought. So I ain't mad at Beasley. I don't know if this was the right move, unless he's just doing this so he, to make sure that the Cowboys just doesn't try to resign him and he's moving on. That's the only thing I can think of. Okay? Beasley is not that stupid. I think he's tired of being. <laughs> I think. Are you laugh. <laughs> I think he's tired of being in the Cowboys, especially now since Amari Cooper stepped in. Yeah, and move on to another team, and I, it, I would pick him up. He's that, he's that, he's that wide receiver that could cross and get you the yards that you need to get. He ain't trying to, 
he ain't, he ain't trying to go over the top. I'm going to cut across his middle, get them 10, so we can move on. Yeah. I have no problem, Cole Beasley. Say. Well, well let, me put, let me restate it. I understand Cole Beasley. I don't know if I would have put it out there like that, but he that's probably his way of telling the Cowboys, peace out, bro. I'm gone. What you th- what's your two cents, man? I, I think he'll look good in a Patriot uniform. Oh shit. Yeah. So that's that that's their type of guy. Um Here we go. Yeah, he like you say, he saw the writing on the wall or whatever. They I mean, but you gotta figure his numbers gonna drop when they added Amari Cooper anyway. Because now you got two, two good quality receivers on the field, so they're not gonna keep targeting you when they got him on the other side, you know, to make it tough on defenses. So that goes without saying that your targets was gonna, be, you know, decrease. You know, but let me ask um, you this. Let me ask yeah. you this. I hear what you're saying. Amari Cooper is that dude, but because he's that dude. Dakota, Dakota uh, Prescott got to get it out there to him. I don't think Dakota is that accurate to throw them bombs out there like that. He need a guy like Cole Beasley to come across the middle, help him out. I'm just saying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I agree. I agree with that. I agree with that. So, all right, man. Unless you got something on your head that you want to put out here, give me your two cents. We can close shop. No. No. We hit all the pressing points. <laughs> Okay. All right, people. That's our show. We appreciate you coming in. The crew here at Get With Sports want to thank you for taking the time to watch the Two Cent Deposit on Sports Podcast. Once again, while you're here, click the subscribe button so you can be alerted to all the episodes we have here on the Get With It Sports 2 YouTube channel. You can find us on Twitter, me at Get With It Sports, my partner Crime here, Brandon at LEB412. Read the post on our blog page at getwithitsports.wordpress.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, at Get With It Sports, or contact us via email at Get With It Sports 2. That's number two at gmail.com. As always, shouts out to the Urban Arena, our Urban Arena affiliates. If you like what we have here, for your sports talk entertainment here at Get With It Sports, check out Team Boy TV that has Big Q, JB, Bernie B, and AA Sports, Straight Sports, No Chaser. Diego Bristikoff, the Black Dominican Russian, and Uncle Hate, the six foot and under post up champ. Once again, appreciate you guys having me on your show last night. And if you want to check it out, once again, I'm put up here above my head. Click on that to get to the, to the episode we did last night, me, Big Q. Uh, check out the Urban Arena crew. We can give you what you need every week for your sports fix while you are on the go. As always, I'm your boy, Glass. And I'm Brandon. The best tag team tandem out here in sports talk. Be good, be safe, get with it. Peace.